It's time to start adding entities other than our player and a single NPC. So opening our entity script, add a new blocks movement boolean, followed by a getter method referencing it. Save the script and proceed to game manager. Here, we're going to create a public entity called get blocking entity at location method that takes in a vector three location. We will then use a for each to cycle through the entities list, checking using an if statement that an entity from the list has its block movement boolean set to true and that its transform position equals the location given. If both return true, then the method returns the entity. If the for each finishes without an entity being returned, it will return null. With our entities and check ready, it's time to create a couple of new actions. So open the action script. Now adding in our new bump and melee action. Let's break down what's going to happen here. Our bump action is a static public method that returns a boolean. And like the movement action, we pass both an entity and direction into it. It uses these to call our game managers get blocking entity at location method, passing the sum of entities transform position and direction into the call. If a blocking entity exists at the location, the local variable target is set to it. It then uses an if statement with its condition that the target needs not to be null, calling the melee action method if it exists, passing in the target while also returning false. Otherwise, movement action is called passing in both the given entity and direction before returning true. Our melee method is a void method that takes in an entity and it just debug logs a bit of text before ending the turn. Modifying the skip action to be more descriptive based on the entity provides us with if and else statements that consider which entity is skipping their action before displaying text, thus ending their turn. With our actions completed, for now, open the player script. Change the line containing our movement action to bump action and add move key help equals to the start of it. Save, and then open the editor. Open the resources folder. Select our NPC and player prefabs using control. And set blocks movement to true on our entity component. Next, select just the NPC prefab and duplicate it. Renaming it to orc. Changing its image to lowercase o. and color on the sprite renderer components to red 63, green 127, and blue also 63. Now duplicate the orc prefab, rename it to troll, change its image to an uppercase T, and color on its sprite renderer components to red 0 and also blue 0. Now open the map manager. Add a new in variable called max monster per room, give it a default of two, scroll down to the generate dungeon call, and include it before rooms. Remove our NPC instantiate, then use the rename symbol command to rename create player to create entity. We we'll add a new string parameter before exchanging the code within with a switch case that instantiates an entity based on the entity string given. Once exchanged, move over to the procgen script. Insert our new int variable into the generate dungeon method. Change line 48's if condition to if rooms.count not equal zero, cut and paste our tunnel between call into the statement and then cut the create entity call and paste it outside the for loop. Adding a player string to the create entity call and renaming new room to rooms with an index of zero. This is done when the player entity is instantiated and a call is made using the update field of view method within the entity that calls map managers set entities visibilities method. Now scroll down where we're going to create a private void method called place entities. It will take in both a rectangular room, new room, and int maximum monsters. A ton is going on, so let's start. We first get the number of monsters using the random dot rain zero being inclusive and maximum monsters plus one being exclusive. After, we create a for loop which loops until monsters equal to the number of monsters. We then, much like when we created our rooms, 
create x and y int variables using random.rain before proceeding to use an if statement to ensure that the x or y isn't equal to a boundary position of the room. If it is, then the loop will start again, else it continues to the next for loop, a for loop that goes through each entity within game manager's entity list, ensuring that the position doesn't match the x and y position. If it does, then it starts the loop again. Finally, a simple if statement is used to decide what create entity call was made before incrementing monster. Now to finish up, add place entities before room.add in our generate dungeon method and proceed to the editor. Now quickly heading to game manager, we're going to set the time to 0.005 and press play. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.